My name is Esmeralda Teresa Hernandez Polanco, biological mother of Evangeline Domilita Polanco, date of birth 6-20-2014, age 9, and mother of Belina Micaela Polanco, date of birth 8-10-2016, age 7. I am going to show a lot of exhibits. Um, there is a lot of detail on each of them. So if you need to pause this slideshow at any time to read th through them thoroughly, then please do so. But I'm just going to go through it to show the exhibits in order to rebuttal and defend myself from the allegations that have been made against me. Our first court order was on 12-24-2017 when the divorce was finalized. This exhibit is from Orange County, California. The certified copy states the following. Mother to have physical custody and father to have visits. Please notice that Maria Leonora Hades is not allowed around Evangeline and Belina Polanco as of June 2017, when an allegation of child abuse was made against her by nurse Rachel Elliott from Baum Park Kaiser Permanente after an ER visit. Vivian Nguyen, CSW, took the case for six months with DCFS at the El Monte, California site. Officer Kim came to speak to me in 2017 and gave me a Victims of Violence card. He asked me to keep this card with me. He asked me to keep this card with me. He stated that he could not find Maria Leonora Hades because she was on the run. Due to this, Vivian Nguyen, CSW, marked the case unfounded. However, she made sure that Tomas and I signed a consent or a letter or contract, I should say. We had to sign a contract stating that Maria Leonora Hades could not be around our children, which is exactly why um, I am disturbed by the fact that she was part of the collateral with this report. Here you can see that this was dated December 24, 2017. This is a certified copy, which you will see the certified stamp on the next slide. Here it says um, on the highlighted section, mother to have sole physical custody, uh, father and mother to have legal joint custody, and for father to have visitations. Here under extended family, it says Maria Leonora Hades cannot be around the children per Vivian Nguyen. And if father is to allow her to be around the children, then he forfeits his custody to mother. Here I have a picture of the West Covina Police Department uh, report information card for victims of violence by Officer Keem, number 447. And here on the right, you have the uh, certified stamp from Orange County, uh, which made the court documents that I just read official. Here where it says reporting to Child Protective Services, this was a child abuse report made by Rachel Elliott with a CPS report number that was made um, June of 2014. Um, excuse me, that says July of 2017. Correction, July 2017. And she made that report uh, based on irritation of the vaginal area that was found after Evangeline had reported inappropriate touch from paternal aunt and paternal aunt told her that it is okay for other people to touch her in her vagina area. Here next to it you have um, the letter from Vivian Nguyen stating that the allegations were unfounded because uh, further information was not obtained. Next, we have a Superior Court of California. This was a child custody investigation report for partial custody that was conducted in January of 2021 and made a part of the hearing for March 2021. Here, um, it talks about how I denied any type of psychotropic medication, uh, that I didn't have paranoid thoughts, but I did state, now I think I have anxiety but I put my motherly duties before myself. One day I would like to speak to someone about it once I get the kin kids linked and settled in. I was speaking about a traumatic event that happened to us in September of 2019. Um, I, do ha I was diagnosed with PTSD and anxiety. I was not diagnosed with a um, 
psychotic disorder and I do not take psychotropic medication. I wasn't prescribed that. Here we have, um, this was filed February 9th, 2021. So you can see the parties involved. Myself, Esmeralda Teresa Hernandez Polanco, Thomas Polanco Saucedo, father, and Evangeline Embelina with our birth dates. And this was the partial child custody investigation conducted by the Superior Court of California, County of Orange, Lamoro Justice Center. Here, I want you to note that it states for mother, record checks with the California Department of Motor Vehicles revealed that mother has a valid driver's license and the record checks revealed no actions by the Department of Motor Vehicles. Record checks with the California Department of Justice Bureau of Criminal Identification and information revealed that mother has no criminal history of convictions. The same was for father. I want you to note that for the recommendations of custody after the partial investigation, it states the mother to continue to have sole physical custody of the children and the parents will continue to have joint legal custody of minor children with a schedule of contact that was made for two states, California and Florida. I want you to note here that it says no, par no third party to be present during the parenting time, father's parenting time, except for immediate family. However, Maria Leonora Hades cannot be present at any time. Again, I want to mention Maria Leonora Hades cannot be present around my children at any time. This was certified and dated March 24th, 2021. Allegations made against me. The children Evangeline Polanco and Belina Polanco's mother, Esmeralda Hernandez Polanco, has mental and emotional problems, including but not limited to paranoid delusions and auditory hallucinations, which render the mother unable to provide regular care for the children. In 2024, the mother demonstrated delusional and irrational thought processes. The mother subjected the child to an unnecessary sexual medical examination. Such mental and emotional problems on the part of the mother endanger the child's physical health and safety and place a child at risk of serious physical harm, damage, and danger. The rest of my slideshow is going to rebuttal these allegations made against me. Here, I also want you to note that for further, by further investigation, it's necessary um, mother's psychiatric evaluation, mother recommends, mother's recommended treatment, including psychotropic medication. I was told by DCFS today that that's something that's up to the judge. He might not need that, especially after the evidence that I've been providing. The mother making sexual abuse allegations causing the children to participate in unnecessary medical examinations. My children have not been forced to participate in any of this, and I will address that later on. Father exposing the children to pornography and mother incompetent to stand trial in Florida. Um, I did stand trial in Florida with, um, we had court cases in Orange County and in Florida for, for custody and for modification of visits. Never have I lost my custody in any of our Florida or Orange County cases. None of them have been DCFS related. This is the first DCFS case that we've had, and it is not in our character to have this kind of involvement. Uh, court violation by father in DCFS. This is a court violation that DCFS had a collateral contact with paternal aunt. Her contact information was provided to them by um, Father Tomas Polanco. Now, I just read in two previous court certified documents from Orange County, dated 2017 and 2021, that Maria Leonora Hades cannot be around my children. So the fact that DCFS thought it was okay to have a collateral contact with her and to even take her report seriously when she has not been involved in my children's life since 2017, I have not seen her since May 2016, so she is not one to report any type of delusion or hallucinations on my part. Uh, what I find most disturbing is that when I met Leonora Hades, I was working as a mental health therapist, an MFT for Hillsides, and she was working, um, she wasn't working actually, she was the one diagnosed with delusional disorder. 
Uh, so it's interesting uh, to see that she's saying she's a licensed marriage and family therapist. I did not know that um, people with a record of battery uh, and people with delusional disorder could get their degree. I'm assuming that she is on psychotropic medication. The reports of general neglect against me. My daughters have insurance through me. They have always had insurance through me since birth. Their father has never provided them with health insurance. Please see the following exhibits of their annual visits and dental visits, cardiology visits, and medical bills paid by me for my daughters. Please see that I have enrolled them in school previously, and now I homeschool them. We have passed two years of homeschool evaluations. He has never taken an interest in their educational needs. I have always cooked and cleaned for them. I have ample videos on Facebook of our school uh, time and my cooking abilities. Medical needs met by, by mother, me, mother. Annual visits, though these are the reports of Belina and Evangeline's annual visits from October of 2023. Here, um, I maintained uh, Evangeline's cardiology needs. So she had a heart murmur when she was two and I took her to Orange County to her cardiologist. She had a follow-up cardiology appointment when she was five, and this is here the report when I also took her, and I was told to take her to her cardiologist when she's 12. So there are certain things that come with a child who has cardiology needs, and I'm the only one who has ever taken care of her medical needs. I doctor exams for both Belina and Evangeline. These are just for one uh, report. I've taken them every single time that they've needed glasses. Dental needs met my met my mother. Met, excuse me. Met my met by mother. Um, again, these are dental visits from this year that just happened on January 25th of 2024. However, I have extensive paperwork of taking my children to their dental visits. So if you need more paperwork more annual visits, more dental visits, I can provide that as well. Educational needs be met by mother. Belina's homeschool evaluation 2022 and 2023. Um, I just want to say that part of my disability, um, sometimes when I speak, um, it depends if I get jaw lock. So I was diagnosed with myalgia or fibromyalgia. And sometimes my jaw can get really stiff and it will affect my speech a little bit. So I apologize if um, I stumble in any way slightly. So the educational needs met by mother, which would be me. Belina's homeschool evaluations 2022 and 2023. So these, this is proof that they've been homeschooled for three years and that they've passed with a certified school teacher with an annual evaluation. Here are Evangeline's homeschool evaluations for 2022 and 2023. Here we have a current private school affidavit filed with the state of California. So my uh, private homeschool is legal and registered with the California Department of Education. And here you can see on the second page that I have two children enrolled in this class in my um, school, a seven-year-old, a nine-year-old, which are my daughters, and in second and fourth grade. I'm the one that does all the lesson planning and I have all the curriculums. I'm also part of the HSLDA. Uh, we received a scholarship for homeschooling this year from them. Here we have the homeschool association rights to homeschool in the state of California. So if at all you feel that I am being a neglectful mother by homeschooling my kids, I can prove that I'm homeschooling them. I can show you all of their work and the lesson plannings. Um, I am following with the state laws in order to homeschool. And you can see that this is my parental right to homeschool. And it is addressed here with all the penal codes necessary. You can see that in detail later if you choose to pause the slides. Allegations of delusion and hallucinations. Please see report by my current therapist, neurologist, arthritis specialist, and primary doctor. All of my doctors and therapists state that my problem is not psychiatric. It is physical. I do not have a history or psychotic disorders or psychiatric hospitalizations. Here's a letter from my current therapist. 
a letter from my previous therapist, proof that my daughters are in therapy, and proof that my daughters had a therapy assessment in Florida. Here is the consultation with my therapist. Um, she is actually not from Pacific Clinics. It's my daughters who went to Pacific Clinics. My therapist is from East Valley Community Mental Health with the Department of Mental Health. Uh, she just stated, I want to know certain things that she stated here. Besides the mother reporting hearing people on a loudspeaker, the mother presented well. She is fully aware of reality. Mother is fine. But the only issue with her is the people on the loudspeakers by her home. It's possible that no one is there. However, unless we are home, we would not know the situation. I have no concerns about her at this time. She did not report hurting herself or others. I have no concerns about the kids. She is really functioning. I am hoping the children are in counseling. So she explained that um, I do not. The therapist indicated if I were to report any self-harm, she will let them know. But I have not reported self-harm. I do not. I never reported self-harm. And uh, she did not recommend a psychiatric eval for me either. This is another conversation that she had. Here it says she did not report hurting herself or others. And she doesn't have concerns about my children. And we have heard uh, loudspeakers near here. I mean, we do live near a high school. We live um, up the hill from Nogales High School. I don't know if we're hearing loudspeakers there. Um, and it is not every single day. It isn't every day. Um, but when we do hear them, um, sometimes they're positive messages and sometimes they're very negative messages. And I'm not the only one that hears them. Um, my kids hear them. My daughters hear them as well. And again, it's not like a voice. We are not hallucinating. It does sound like it's on a loudspeaker. Here's a letter from my previous therapist uh, stating that I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, but that I'm very resilient and that we worked a lot on coping skills uh, just to deal with um, the, the flashbacks and intrusive thoughts that I had from being attacked in September of 2019 in the apartment when I was by myself with my daughters. Uh, this is where um, I started having physical ailments. I was diagnosed with cervicalgia as well. Uh, from an MRI that I had in Orlando in 2021. If you would like me to submit uh, my neurology paperwork from 2021, I can do so as well. But for now, I'm just submitting my current information from my current neurologist. I was told that I had a concussion then from uh, being hit on the head here on my left side. Here's the neurology paperwork. My current paperwork, it says 2-15-2024. I was referred to an MRI of the brain and an MRI of the spine. And I just went and asked for a CD copy of my MRI exams. I have a neurology follow-up in, in May. And I'm going to ask my neurologist if he can write me a letter stating that it's not psychiatric, that it is um, neurological and it doesn't in any way stop me from functioning as a parent and I am not a danger to my children. So I did ask my neurologist if they can write a letter um, and they, they will get back to me as soon as they can. Here's my arthritis clinic le letter that I am receiving services at the Covina Arthritis Clinic. And at the moment I was diagnosed with myalgia. Uh, possible fibromyalgia that comes with a lot of ailments, but again, none of my physical ailments have stopped me from being a good mother. Here, the children were assessed at Pacific Clinics by Melissa Garcia and Ulysse Ortiz. Um, this was also in January, and this is their information and the information from their supervisors. Children's previous therapy assessments in Orlando, Florida. Allegations of sexual examination. My daughters have never been forced to have a sexual medical exam, and they were not examined in 2024. My daughters have had annual physicals. You have already seen the child abuse exam report from Kaiser Permanente, 
in which nurse Rachel Elliott made a child abuse report. This was not forced. I was told to take my child to the emergency room. An exam any examinations were done by her pediatricians at a professional medical practice. Extensive exams have not been conducted and they have not been unnecessary or forced. Please refer to their pediatrician, Susan Ka, from La Puente Medical Center, where they had their last annual physical. I have complied with DCFS and have been in therapy for seven days, which is what was provided to me on 1-29-2024. Here it says mental health, mother and children to be in therapy, seven days. We complied with this. I'm still in therapy. I have a therapy session tomorrow. Parenting courses in Florida and California certificates. We've been asked to do parenting courses in both Florida and California. And here um, in 2017, I did the Children in Betweens course. And over here in Florida, um, I also did a parenting education course. Allegations that I left Florida without permission. I notified father and the Florida courthouse. Father knew that we were moving back to my parents' home so that I can obtain medical treatment. I almost had a stroke over the summer and moved to be near family. I was denied medical benefits for two years in Florida. I have neurology and arthritis visits as you have seen in previous slides. The paperwork to return to Florida was not to force us to move back. It was a visitation enforcement. I called to ask. I was not being held in contempt. It was only to ensure that father had his visits either in California or Florida. A visitation schedule for two states was already set in place since 2021. So please see the following slides. Florida adopted the California order and modified some visits. Here you see um, where it says the parties have a California custody order and it states that mother still has custody father was granted visits. There was a partial child custody investigation stating that um, Maria Leonora Hades could not be around my children. Here the court finds that a substantial change in, circumstance, in circumstances has occurred. The court does not find that a reversal of the primary parent, which is me, designated is warranted at the time. However, the court also finds that the father should be exercising greater time sharing now that he is in now that he is a Florida resident. So here they modified the schedule of visits. Mother shall have all time sharing not reserved to the father. The father shall have time sharing every other weekend with the minors. Um, he was granted some holidays. I want to note that here it says. The father shall enjoy Thanksgiving break each year. He did not pick them up for Thanksgiving break this year. He came in October for one week instead. Um, it also says the father shall enjoy spring break, spring break each year. We were in Florida for spring break and he could not take time off from work. So he did not comply with his visit. It also has rotating weeks for the summer. The party shall enjoy rotating three weeks periods with the minor children over summer break, with the father enjoying the first three week period beginning the Saturday after school ends. Now again, father could not take time off during the summer. My daughter spent the summer with me and he did not comply with summer visits. So this is why we reopened the case in Orange County just to modify the visitation schedule because this schedule was not working for father uh, due to his time off. So he only gets one or two weeks off a year and he wasn't able to take them for all of this time sharing that he had. Recommendations. Here I want to make three specific points. It says the mother shall return the children to the state of Florida on or before September 26. This was just an enforcement, again, of visitation. Either he came here to pick up the kids to see them or we would go out there. Law enforcement was not needed for this. I complied with um, letting him see the children around the school schedule. 
Here it says the mother shall immediately make arrangements with Okeechobee law enforcement to enable them to interview the children. This was based on a child abuse report uh, where we were at Okeechobee Library. I was getting some books from the shelves and one daughter was playing on the computer. The other daughter was playing with magnetic tiles on the table. Uh, my daughter said that somebody had walked by and touched her in her private area. I did not witness this myself. I am not making this up or telling my children to say this. Uh, my daughter wanted to speak to a police officer and I let her. So they were already interviewed by everyone that needed to be interviewed. I did comply with this. Also here it says the mother shall immediately, subject to schedule availability, submit to a neuropsychological exam for delusional thoughts. Um, again, my problem isn't that I have delusional thoughts. Um, I do have a neurologist and he says it is not psychiatric. If you need to speak to my neurologist, then you have his number and I can give you an authorization of release form. But I did comply with that. I have a neurologist who I see. Mother complied with the following. So I complied with, I have a neurologist who has stated that my problem is not psychiatric. He has not referred me to psychiatrist. He has referred me to MRIs and EEG. Father came to California to visit children for one week in October and one week in February. Father calls whenever he wants to have virtual visits with the children. Mother has never denied him the children. Father did not comply with his time sharing when we were in Florida. He did not pick them up for spring break, his summer weeks, or Thanksgiving. Mother did comply with police and DCFS in Florida when my child reported inappropriate touch at the library. I did not make this up. This is what my daughter stated, and she spoke to the police herself. My children were interviewed by Officer Taylor from Okeechobee PD and Robin Palmerin from DCFS, and she closed the case after calling a welfare check with West Covina PD in September 2023. Here is her contact information for Robin Pomeran from DCFS in Okeechobee. I want you to note that I, we had a positive home inspection. Uh, I do not believe it was necessary to, to remove um, Evangeline and Belina from our home. Uh, they have all of the necessary, all of the necessary needs are met in our home and they always have been. So I think this was more detrimental for our family. Um, I think it was more traumatizing to my children than it was beneficial. Here it says the child Evangeline Polanco is nine years old. She was alert and active. She appeared well nourished and maintained. Her clothing, face, and visible body were clean. Her hair maintained. She did not have any visible injuries noted on her arms, face, chest, legs, etc. And no broken skin was noted. She appeared comfortable in the presence of her mother and in the home environment. My children are very comfortable with me in our home environment. The child Belina is seven years old. She was alert and active. She appeared well nourished and maintained. Her clothing, face, and visible body were clean. Her hair maintained. She did not have any visible injuries noted on her arms, face, chest, legs, etc. And no broken skin was noted. She appeared comfortable in the presence of her mother and in the home environment. Home inspection. The family resides in a one bedroom converted garage. So I want to speak to this so that you don't think we live in a garage. It used to be my parents' garage. They did convert it into a one bedroom apartment, but we have all the facilities that a one bedroom apartment needs. The entrance to mother's area is located on the right side of the main house. So I have a separate entrance from the main house. The place has a living room with an adjacent kitchen and the bathroom. The mother and the children share the one bedroom. The children share a bedroom while the mother sleeps in a separate bed. CSW observed ample food supplies in the family refrigerator and cupboards, loaf of bread, milk, cereals, peanut butter, uh, beans, rice, canned food. So I have um, state assistance and we, we have ample food. Uh, we are blessed. The kitchen cabinets had dry foods, cereal, uh, different foods again. Uh, CSW Tofawomo did not observe any safety hazards at the house. We don't have safety hazards. I have a, a fire detector and a carbon dioxide detector, sorry, carbon monoxide detector. Uh, CSW observed no safety hazards in the home environment, such as gas leaks or water leaks, electric hazards. Uh, the smoke detectors are fine. 
house was neatly furnished. Um, I'm very clean. I wash the dishes every night, sweep every night, make sure everything's maintained well for my children. I'm the one that cooks and cleans for them and um, washes their laundry and buys their clothes. The front manicured and clean. Um, cold and hot running water, electricity. No drug alcohol uh, use observed by the adult in the house, so that was me. Um, no drug or alcohol found. Children are safe with mother. Children report being happy at home with mother and no neglect. Note that we are being harassed. We all hear the same thing. If law enforcement arrested people saying those things to us, then we would not be in danger. Mother is not placing them in danger and there is no danger in the home. Mother cannot control any danger outside of the home. That is law enforcement's job. Please see the next slides with children's report. Interview with child Belina Polanco. CSW met with a child Belina regarding the referral allegations. The child Belina is seven years old. Concerning the referral allegations, the child Belina stated, My name is Belina. I'm seven. I am homeschooled with mom. I am in second grade. I love science. Sometimes I hear people talking outside. I hear them talking. They said they're going to kill mommy. Yes, I listen to mom. Sometimes I get spanking from mom. It does not hurt. Mom used her hand to spank me. No one is hitting. No one is touching me anywhere on my body. Sometimes I get nightmares. Yes, I get food to eat. Mom cooks for us. Yes, I love mom. I'm happy here. I'm not scared of mommy. I don't fight with my sister. We got lots of books and food. The child did not report any forms of abuse or neglect. It appeared that the mother coached the children, the child to report that she heard the people on the loudspeaker, which threatened to kill her. Um, I have not coached my children at all. Um, in anything. I ask them questions. Um, like I said before, I'm a marriage and family therapist and I'm very nurturing, very loving. And a lot of my skill sets that I learned as a therapist has transferred into me being a great mother. And, um, you know, I do not believe that I'm hallucinating. I still believe that this is a, a loudspeaker that myself and my daughters hear from time to time. And, uh, like I said, it I believe this to be um, it, it, that it's custody related. Um, one of the persons, one of the persons I heard on the loudspeaker was actually Ricardo Polanco, which is my ex-husband's brother. Uh, I recognize his voice because he says things like "hater." Um, he says "hater" a lot, and I recognized his voice very easily. And uh, this is why I'm saying that I feel that we are being targeted because of custody related reasons. Uh, we've already had five custody cases where he's wanted uh, either 50 50 or full custody, and he's been denied it all five times. Um, they felt that my children were better placed in my care. Um, this is why they've always granted me physical custody because I'm the one that has always managed their medical education needs, just all of their needs all around have been managed by me, and I am in no way neglectful. Interview with Child Evangeline Polanco. CSW met with Child Evangeline regarding the referral allegations of general neglect. The child denied any forms of abuse or neglect by the mother. Concerning the allegations, the child Evangeline stated, I'm Evangeline. I'm nine years old. My birthday is in June. I'm homeschooled by mom. I'm good. I have my friends in Florida. The mother lived in Florida prior to relocating to California. So we're originally from California, um, born and raised in California. And this is my parents' home. This is my parents' property. Um, although I'm living in the apartment with my daughters, that's on their property separate from the house. I've been living in this house since I was four years old. I went to school out here. Um, and this is this is home. This is, this is home for us. Uh, we did live in Florida for three years. I'm in fourth grade. I love science and social studies. Yes, mom is a great teacher. Mom's not hitting us. Sometimes she spanks our butt with her hand. She's not using belts on us. She talks to us. So my method of discipline is I usually just talk to them. Um, it's very rare that I would need to spank their bottom. Um, they would have to really say something disrespectful for me to want to spank him the bottom with um, my hand. 
Now, um, it's never hard, like they said. Um, it's more of an attention grabber. But my the way I see it is my daughters are such good girls. They're very obedient that disciplining them is not very often. And an example of when I spanked Belina was when she didn't want to get off of her tablet, so she threw it on the floor. You know, when I told her, you don't do that, um, I did end up spanking her on the bottom with the open hand, not, you know, not to the point where, like she says, I don't have a heavy hand. Um, I don't have a heavy hand, and that's the truth. Uh, but it's more of an attention grabber of a you don't do this. And I took the tablet away from her for two months, actually, for doing that, for throwing it on the floor and having a really big tantrum. So uh, for the most part, my discipline has been, you know, you need to go cry it out, have your space. And then when you come back, let's talk about it. And we talk about it. Um, I really help my children manage their anxiety as well. Um, I'm not scared of mom. This is why my kids are not scared of me. They've always had love nurturance for me. Uh, yes, I heard the people on the loudspeaker said they're going to kill mom. They called her bad words. I don't want to say the bad words. I heard them talking on the loudspeaker. I heard it lots of times saying they're going to kill mom. I'm not seeing anyone else around the house. I don't hear voices of people that I don't see. Mom's not hitting us. We're doing fine. I don't have nightmares. So child denied any forms of abuse or neglect. Um, again, they think that I'm coaching my children to say this, but I'm not. Um, the problem is when I start hearing these loudspeakers, it's usually at night when it's really, really dark outside. There's this period where it's very dark outside and you look out the window and you can't see anything because it's pitch black. And you have to wait for the street lights to come on in order to see anything outside. So in the interim, um, I can't really see anyone, but it does sound like a megaphone or a loudspeaker. And I can tell the difference. I mean, I was a mental health therapist for many years. Um, if I was hallucinating, I would tell you I was hallucinating. But I'm not the only one that can hear the loudspeaker. And it's annoying. It's like people who are just talking back and forth to each other on a microphone and they think it's funny. I don't know if they're playing a game outside, but it's annoying to us. Um, but every once in a while, they will direct a comment towards us and it is very disrespectful. Um, so I feel like some people on the microphone or megaphone are just talking to each other and they're being funny. Um, with each other and then other people are being disrespectful and threatening and I think it's very weird I don't know if they're playing a game I don't think it's an appropriate game but we don't need to hear it and I hope law enforcement just tells them to move their megaphones elsewhere positive education reports um, about me Please note that mother was working on her PhD program and successfully obtained good merits while being accused of being delusional. Please see transcripts and Dean's list certificate. Mother would like to continue her PhD program once she is physically healthy again. Mother would also like to return to teaching in academia as she used to teach psychology courses at a tribal college for a bachelor's program. I would like to finish my PhD um, and, and continue teaching. Mother has a master's degree in marriage and family therapy with a specialization in Latino, Latina family studies, or just do something educational because um, that's my field and I absolutely love education. Here you can see my transcripts from North Central University, um, which merged to National University. And I had straight A's, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I had a 4.0. Uh, but I stopped uh, when they had the merger because the merger from North Central University didn't go well with National University. But we're not going to go into that. I want to transfer to another school. Here's my um, master's degree from Pacific Oaks College. Dated uh, 2010. And I made the dean's list at, um, at the school for my PhD program. So I have some written statements regarding my case just to fill you in a little bit on what happened with the DCFS social worker. I think it's really important uh, that you understand 
why I felt like this was a false report, why I didn't even believe that this removal was happening because of how things transpired. So father had a visit with children for the weekend from 3-1-2024 to 3-3-2024. He was to bring the children back to mother by 5 p.m. per his verbal agreement and 7 p.m. per the Florida agreement. Judge Michelle Bell will be speaking with the magistrate in Florida regarding jurisdiction. Judge Michelle Bell stated the jurisdiction is in Orange County since 2017. However, Florida is saying that they have jurisdiction. Father has refused mediation twice. He failed to appear to mediation on 12-9-2023, and he refused mediation on 2-28-2024 in front of Judge Michelle Bell. The judge stated that mother still has physical custody, and parents have joint legal custody with a visitation schedule for father. So we had a court case in Orange County to modify visits on February 28, 2024. On February 29th is when I got the call from the social worker that she was going to push to remove my children. I had not spoken, I had not seen her in two months, and I did not understand why she was threatening to remove my children. The children are always to reside with the mother during the school weeks. My children are now missing school, and I, Esmeralda Teresa Hernandez Polanco, do not know of their whereabouts. Um, I do not know a physical address location for them or where to serve Father Tomas Polanco anymore. I do not know if he's in the state or, or country. Now I know that he did stay in the state. I fear for my daughter's safety. The only court hearing that we have in place is in Orange County, and that's going to happen on 3-20-2024. I just received an email stating that we have a court hearing in Florida on 3-13-2024. I kindly emailed them that father, myself, and children are in California, and we do not reside in Florida anymore, so there is no need to have a court hearing in Florida. I had previously filed a written objection to a hearing in Florida because we had a hearing in California. My written objection was approved. I do not know why I received an email on 3-5-2024 for a court hearing in Florida on 3-13-2024. Does this mean he took my children to Florida? It seems to me that everyone thinks they have jurisdiction over my children. Orange County says they have jurisdiction, which holds the original certified court documents. Florida thinks they have jurisdiction, but all they can really do is modify visits. The Department of Children and Family Services in Glendora, California, think they hold jurisdiction and stated that the children cannot leave out of the state. The problem is I do not have a court hearing filed in Los Angeles County, so I drove to Edmund D. Edelman's Children's Courthouse on 3-5-2025 to verify if I had a court date on 3-19 per paperwork that was emailed and texted to me uh, by Fumi Tofo Womo. What was concerning is that when I showed my identification to the clerk, she said she didn't have a court case there for me, so I didn't believe this to be true. The clerk stated that there's nothing filed for me at the courthouse and I do not have court hearing on 3-19-2024. Please note that the paperwork does not have a case number on it, so the paperwork didn't have a case number when I received it. She told me to go to the first floor and speak to DCFS there. I asked a receptionist who looked up my case with my daughter's names and birth dates and she stated that I do not have a court hearing. I do not have a removal from a judge and that it says it's an allegation made against me that's being investigated and still pending. They could not verify the documentation provided by the social worker. So I have been in panic and in tears looking for my children everywhere and I have made several police reports against the social worker and DCFS in Glendora. So this was a very scary situation for me because per our court date in OC on 228, Dad was to have a visit for the weekend and bring them back to me on the 3rd. And then all of a sudden, I received a text message saying my kids were removed from my care. Um, I do not believe that the DCFS social worker did conducted a thorough investigation and that the removal from my care was beyond unnecessary. And it was more traumatic for myself and my children. West Covina Police Department stated that there was never a call made against me for neglect no calls for criminal behavior, and no call to assist a DCFS removal. The police never came here to take my children. Tomas did not bring them back from his scheduled visit 
and it's a violation of the court order, both in Orange County and in Florida. Please note that one of the police reports states that we live in a garage and we do not live in a garage. So we've already clarified that earlier. My parents converted their garage into a one bedroom with all the amenities, full kitchen, living room, bedroom. My daughters have their own beds. They have all their needs met here. My daughters are now missing school because I have homeschooled for three years. Previous paperwork filed includes annual reviews with certified teachers, all the different paperwork that you've seen in the previous slides. DCFS involvement. This is how the case started. On January 25th, 2024, I received a phone call from a disgruntled and angry social worker named Funmi Tofowomo. She stated that I was suicidal, hallucinating, not capable of taking care of my children and neglectful. I was at the dentist with my children when I received that call. She was angry that I was not home. I did not have an appointment with this woman. She came by to my, to my home on January 29th, 2024 at 3439 Phoebe Court, West Covina, California, 91792 in the apartment entrance. This woman did not speak to me. She was running around my house looking for my mother. I explained to her that I am the mother who holds custody of the children and that she needs to speak to me directly, not my mother. My mother stated that she had a list of police reports against me. Now I have footage of her outside of our home running around looking for my mother and not wanting to speak to me. I have never had the police show up for any reports against me. On the contrary, I'm the one calling the police because of incidents like this with false paperwork. I have filed fraud and identity theft reports for about three years now. I signed an authorization of release form for the social worker to speak to my therapist and my children's therapy assessors. My therapist and my children's therapist stated that I am not neglectful or a harm to my children. My therapist told the social worker that my problems are physical, not mental and that I do not need a psychiatric evaluation. However, if it appeases the social worker, then she can refer me. The social worker was angry and said no. She stated that I must have a psychiatric evaluation through DCFS. That is not what I have. I have a written plan for my children and myself to be in therapy for seven days. This was filed previously. I have not seen the social worker since 129, 2024, and she has not made further visits here. She called angry on 229, 2024, that she was going to remove my children. I asked on what grounds. She did not answer me. This was the day after our court hearing on 228, 2024. It was very suspicious since we just had a court hearing on 228, 2024, still granting me physical custody. I have not been referred to a psychiatric evaluation by anyone. I have not been referred by my neurologist, by my primary care doctor, by my arthritis doctor, or my therapist. I do not have any referrals of this nature. I have no psychiatric history of hospitalizations and have not been assessed by anyone other than my current therapist. This letter was filed on 228, 2024 and marked confidential. Thomas took the girls up for a visit on 3-1-2024 and has not returned them. So this is what I filed at Orange County Courthouse. He does not want to answer my calls or tell me his location. The social worker texted me that night that she had a court order from a judge to remove my children. Again, this has no court number. So I'm trying, I tried filing a missing persons report because to me, that's what happened. The social worker stated that I have monitored visits with Tomas monitoring my visits two times per week for three hours. Thomas was willing to let me see my children at the library three times a week for three hours to homeschool them and two times a week virtually so they can see me and not fall behind in school. The social worker told Thomas I cannot see my children without a monitored aid. Now she told him that I cannot have contact with them. I have not been able to speak to them on the phone or see them via FaceTime. So this happened for about a week. I kept going to different DCFS. I went to DCFS El Monte. I went to Edelman Children's Courthouse twice. <coughs> once to file extensive um, paperwork and um, just evidence to rebuttal the allegations against me. I also, I've been to the Glendora office at least five times. But even then, her recommendation was two times a week for three hours. I was only able to see them on March 8th. 
from 10 to 12 for two hours and I was able to see them on March 12th from 10 to 12 for two hours and they're going to let me see them on Friday uh, which is the 15th for two hours but again I feel that this removal was unnecessary and I hope that the judge does grant for them to be placed back in my care um, so that they can continue to homeschool and have the stability and the love and the care that I've always provided them. Uh, DCFS is not telling me where my children are and stated that Tomas cannot leave the state with my children. He stated he will stay in California, yet I'm not sure if he's in California. So I just have no idea where my kids are and I've never experienced that in my entire life. This is very scary and confusing situation, not understanding why my children were removed from my care. My children are not being harmed or neglected by me, and I do not have delusional thoughts, and I'm not hallucinating. Thomas is violating the court order by not letting me see my children per Orange County uh, and not answering my phone calls. I asked him to take them to DCFS Glendora so that I could see them, but he didn't answer me. He said that the social worker told him that I cannot have contact with my children, but when I went to DCFS and spoke to Jane Campo Verde, she was able to facilitate um, and communicate with uh, the coordinator of visits, and I was able to and able to see my children the next day for two hours. He said the social worker told him that I couldn't. So um, I believe that Fumi Tofuomo has violated protocol and she did not conduct a thorough investigation on me. Um, and she uh, violated the court order from Orange County by taking a report from Maria Leonora Hades, who is the perpetrator from 2017. And we do have, again, a certified copy that Maria Leonora Hades cannot be around my children. So none of her allegations would be valid. I want to press charges now against DCFS Glendora um, for not conducting a real investigation. Um, if they had just, if Tofu Womo had just done her job and checked all of my paperwork, she would have not removed them from my care, but she didn't bother to do so. Thomas is violating the court order by not letting me see the children per Orange County because I still have an Orange County court date on the 20th and I'm still going to attend. I called Coral Springs, Florida to do a welfare check on my children because his last known address that I have is 3650 North University Drive, apartment M3, Coral Springs, Florida. I didn't know that he planned on staying in California and getting an apartment out here until about last week. So um, this is all I have to say, and I certify under oath that what I am stating is true. Um, this is Esmeralda Teresa Hernandez Polanco. Uh, Master's in Marriage and Family Therapy with a specialization in Latino Latina Family Studies. If you have further questions, you can contact me at 626-653-8874 or you can email me at ethernandezp1983 at gmail.com or ethpolanco at gmail.com. So I hope you reconsider uh, this removal from my children. Um, again, I believe that they are safer in my care and they are not neglected with me in any way and all of their needs are met here at home. Thank you and have a good day.